In this video, we're going to show you how to build a four transistor PWM or pulse width modulation generator. By the way, if you want to build this breadboard, here's a picture of it with the components in it and the schematic references superimposed over it. Notice the orientation of the four transistors. You want to make sure you get them in the right direction. Also, there's a couple of very small jumpers there that might be hard to see, but you want to make sure you get those in there in the proper location. This is a picture of the schematic so that you can reference those parts on the breadboard. And this is the parts list. You're also going to need, obviously, a breadboard and some jumper wires and other things, a power supply or a way to, a way to power the circuit. So I recommend going to breadboardcircuits.com. There's a list of minimum recommended equipment, also uh, best practices and some safety procedures as well. It's a very simple circuit. It's based on an A-stable multivibrator, uh, which uh, we built in a previous video. Uh, this was actually is a variation of the improved multivibrator that we built in a previous video. It's simply four transistors. The reason for the four transistors uh, because is because we need to needed to clean up this uh, the output of the the basic A stable multivibrator. This is your basic A stable multivibrator right here. It consists of two transistors and four resistors. Now, uh, this actually, this pot right here was not here on the um, basic A-stable multivibrator. We introduced that for the PWM generator. So the basic A-stable multivibrator just simply a, is a very symmetrical uh, circuit uh, where you just have a, a crude output waveform, which is cleaned up by this stage here to make it a a nice uh, square wave. This actually is what we had coming out of this stage right here. It's kind of just uh, going back on the previous video. We didn't want that. We didn't want, certainly didn't want this kind of an output for a pulse width modulation generator. So this stage right here cleans up the waveform so you have this nice clean, albeit a 50% duty cycle square wave uh, coming out of here. So in order to make this, uh, essentially to turn this into a pulse width modulator, we need to introduce some asymmetry, which is really simple to do. We introduce this pot right there. And this potentiometer will basically um, change the uh, time constant uh, of one side of this multivibrator with respect to the other. And the nice thing about this is you still have your um, so this is set up to produce a square wave um, at 50 percent duty cycle this is set up to produce a square wave of um, about uh, one kilohertz these originally yeah so they're around 6.8k introducing this 10k pot you got 5k on this side 5k on this side and now you've got these 1K resistors here. So you got about 6K on this side. 6K on this side uh, when the pot is at midway. Uh, and so when you adjust it one way, say if you adjust it this way, this, re this uh, resistance goes down, this resistance goes up. So you're, you're balancing it out by using the pot in this manner. What that does, though, is that causes the output to be asymmetrical. And on this one, we're able to get about a, from a 15% to an 85% duty cycle. It's not zero to 100%, but this is just a basic four transistor PWM circuit, sort of a demo circuit. So here's our little circuit in action here. Uh, this, is a, this is just a little blue LED I put in there and actually connected it directly to the circuit because it's got an output impedance of about 1k which is just fine for an led you can see the waveform over here right now it's about actually it's about at a 12 percent duty cycle this is on its lowest setting by adjusting this pot here you can see 
the duty cycle increases greatly. And we're now at 85% at, um, duty cycle. You notice if I slowly adjust this down, the duty cycle decreases and the brightness of the LED will slowly decrease. So this is essentially a PWM being used as a pulse width modulated LED dimmer circuit, which is the ideal way really to dim an LED and a great way to control um, uh, DC brushed motors, of course, through a, um, through a driver uh, device such as a, you know, a FET or a, or, or a transistor. If you were to drive a bunch of LEDs, you'd want to have a, also a driver device that this would input into. So that's our four transistor pulse width modulator. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you did, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. For more information about this project, as well as recommended breadboarding equipment, best practices, and safety tips, please go to breadboardcircuits.com.